Now, given that right now, Disney CEO Bob Iger is beginning to focus more so on Star Wars movies and strictly focusing on bringing Star Wars back into the theaters again and really looking at the shows as more or less of a supplement or a side thing, that's basically the new focus by Disney and Lucasfilm as of right now. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future Star Wars updates. I'm also on Twitter at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. And without wasting too much of your time, let's get right into all of this. Now we know that there's a lot of things happening between Tony Gilroy, George Lucas, John Favreau, and Dave Filoni to really bring themselves together as this quote-unquote dream team to really steer things in the right path. Now, we know that Tony Gilroy is going to work on other Star Wars shows beyond Andor Season 2, which I believe is fantastic news, by the way. But focusing in here with George Lucas, there's been a lot of things going on about what the executives, the board members, and even Bob Iger are planning to do to have George Lucas take over many elements of Lucasfilm to really course correct the franchise. And there's more to the story that we will be talking about. We talked about this a couple of days ago. But what's interesting about this is exactly what the motive really was and exactly why they're moving forward with this plan and exactly what their goal or aim is to get out of this overall strategy of theirs. Now, with that being said and all, What's really exciting about all of this is that given that, of course, George Lucas is heavily working on a lot of Star Wars shows already as we speak. You know, he's working on Mandalorian Season 4, Ahsoka Season 2 with John and Dave, so there's a lot of things coming out of that sense. However, alright, with George Lucas currently very involved with the new shows and movies by John and Dave, one of the big plans that Disney has is for George Lucas to take over Lucasfilm in a very unique way to course correct the company and the franchise by 2024. Now the truth behind the story and why Disney aims to bring George back into Lucasfilm to take over multiple departments, one of them being the story group, has to do with the fact that Disney has been very unhappy with the story group and their direction of the High Republic books and concepts that they have not been garnering the right attention or sales that they wanted for those projects. This includes, of course, also the Acolyte. Now, the main reason they want Lucas in and how they plan for him to take over many departments is to instruct the employees on how to properly tell the stories of the old Republic era more so and to focus on a linear story that will be well organized. Disney feels only Lucas is capable of organizing Star Wars the right way since he understands it best and that right now Disney is in such a desperate phase. They are doing anything that they can to stay on track and to course correct the franchise. Now, Beyond this, the main reason, too, why they want George to really come back over at Lucasfilm and to take over some of these departments is to also teach a lot of those over at Lucasfilm how to properly handle Star Wars, how to properly direct it and bring it in the right path. This way, when George is no longer at Lucasfilm or with us, they have very creative, you know, creators that can really push Star Wars in the right path, that they won't always have to necessarily rely on George. Some fans would beg to differ that you always need George Lucas, period, the end, and I can understand that point of view as well, I respect that. But what's interesting about this too, is how they are eventually phasing out the High Republic books, the overall, you know, uh, format of that era, and more. So that's an interesting thing to actually focus on here, is the fact that they want to eventually phase that out and they're going to be doing that slowly but surely and eventually strictly focusing on the old republic instead because let's face it we know that the high republic was a greenlit project by kathleen kennedy to create basically her own version of the old republic with little to no violence at all that was basically her structure of the hr era now on top of this too What's really interesting is that we know that George is going to be getting a lot of privileges all because of Disney. Once he gets in there by 2024, you know, as the head of the story group, he's going to have a lot of privileges such as 
you know, uh, making a lot of calls and decisions on the roadmap. We're going to talk about that in just one second. But there's more to it than just that. They want to also make sure that there's going to be a lot of control over the budgeting restraints and stuff around those lines for many of these upcoming Star Wars projects, be it movies or TV shows, whatever it may be. They want to make sure that they have the right person doing that. So on to the next thing here is that Disney is eventually going to drop the High Republic focus and pay closer attention to the Old Republic content and multiple types of media that will be led by Lucas. This will also involve the upcoming films. The plan for Lucas to take over multiple departments also has to do with how in 2024 he will be taking over like we explained before, organizing the roadmap and gaining the privilege to be one to make the decisions on how well organized the movies and shows will be on a timeline to create a proper release date system, which projects release before or after others. Now, Disney is preparing to phase out the High Republic, and they needed George to help out to focus on the Old Republic instead, and that's why they are making the big move right now. It's not just about that, but it's also about having George becoming this figure or this icon at the company to pass on his knowledge. Almost, you know, quite literally what happens in Star Wars, passing on that knowledge to another. Now, that answer is Dave Filoni. We know that he was a true protege of George Lucas, but Disney's mindset is that they want to create multiple, you know, uh, people that could be considered a protege of George Lucas. Somebody that really has a lot of knowledge of George. They don't want to just rely on Dave Filoni because that's a lot of workload. So they want people to follow George. They want to learn more about George and his overall outlook on Star Wars. And once he spends a lot more time with Lucasfilm, that's going to blossom. Now, what's interesting about this, too, that I think a lot of fans need to be very well aware of is the fact that Ahsoka Season 2 and Mando Season 4 are going to be heavily instructed by George Lucas. So you're going to have George, John, Dave, and even Tony Gilroy helping out greatly with those projects. And I think at the end of the day, that's a very good move because those two, I think, are going to have a lot of engagement levels. It's going to have a lot of anticipation. Given that Ahsoka Season 1 was all written by Dave Filoni, that's another reason that I think a lot of fans need to check this out on, of course, you know, August or in August. Uh, by the way, we talked about the release date. It's going to be mid to late August. There's a lot of talk that it's going to be August 31st. I don't really see that. It may very well be around August 30th more so because Star Wars usually always falls on a Wednesday, but we'll have to wait and see. But there's a lot of things going out of this. I mean, Ahsoka, the Disney executives are looking at this as the home run of the Star Wars franchise. They are literally looking at Ahsoka as the home run of Star Wars Disney Plus, and they want to, and this is their big plan that might seem controversial, is that they want to make Ahsoka the new flagship series to kind of overtake The Mandalorian. That's basically what they want to do, uh, because the Dave Filoni movie is going to have more elements of what you will see in Star Wars Ahsoka than what's being told in The Mandalorian, so to speak. So overall, there's a lot of great things coming out of this. I would love to hear what you all have to say about this below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys next time.